Welcome to another review video. This time around I'll be going over all the Palantine units. But these are really bad. Like really bad. The only redeeming quality of this seasonal ram is the fact that you can exchange for Valentine Noah. Exchanging for her will be pretty pricey as you'll need 15 Valentine units to make one trade and you're gonna need at least two copies of her but ideally you should get three. So unless you have an old account with a lot of Valentine units that are just collecting dust in your monster box or a lot of copies of Venus, you're gonna need to roll this garbage machine to get enough trade fodder. Of course, like usual, the other good units here are from new bundle. So if you don't care about Noah, you can buy these bundles and forget about the machine. There's a grand total of 29 Valentine units, and frankly I don't see much value in discussing pretty much most of them, but I'll try to make an effort for some of them. If it's not clear already, I don't think it's a good idea to roll here. I'll be personally skipping this machine, because I already rolled a lot in Demon Slayer, and will roll in Hunter x Hunter, which we might see in a week or two. Also I'll try to save for a future Super God Fest that will include the only Valentine unit I care about, and the new GFEs, Goten and Nova. This Super Gathas happened earlier this month in JP, so maybe NA will see it in early May, or maybe sooner. Okay, so let's see some of these garbage units that I think are complete failures. If you do see a use for these units, please let me know in the comments below, because maybe I'm being a little too harsh. Okay, maybe that was a little bit harsh, but I don't see a use for these units, unless you have no other alternatives at all. These next units are also bad, but not as useless as the previous ones, and that's not saying much. Sonia and Aldrisha could do a modest amount of damage in BDP teams, but their skills and awakenings leave a lot to be desired. For a cleric, Sonia's cooldown is way too long and doesn't have any other utility awakenings. Alrisha does have a double L and could fix RCB debuffs, but it's gonna be hard to fit her in a team, especially because her active won't really be useful most of the time. Both of their equips have a lot of team RCBs, but I don't really place much value in them. Senri and Pono do a modest amount of damage as well, but being transform units limit their damage output. Pono does raise her damage cap, but she only does one ping of damage. It's kinda hard to justify running either of them in my opinion, especially because their base form active doesn't provide anything useful like a haste or a delay. Both of their equips are not bad, 3 effective skill boosts with some bulk is pretty decent. There's a bunch of similar equips out there, so they don't really stand out, but it's always good to have more options. Both Aramis and Kuvia also have a decent damage multiplier, and could also handle RCB debuffs, but that's all they bring to the table. Aramis used to be really good back in the day, due to her low cooldown void attribute absorption active, but there's way better options out there, like Sophie Sam, that also take care of damage absorption. At the very least, their equip awakenings are pretty solid, but it's unfortunate that they don't have any effective skill boosts. Nays isn't enough full cleric, but she doesn't have any heal TPAs or other utility, apart from her TPAs, which honestly don't matter that much. Her equip is much much better, as it has really solid awakenings. But again, it sucks that she doesn't have any effective skill boosts, this equip works really well on units like Seca and Mayon, and maybe they recently buff Adderley, but probably not because of no skill boost. Lee is an interesting unit, as she's one of the few units that can swap your leader with a sub. But Hunter x Hunter is gonna bring two units that do the same, and they have either more utility or more damage than Lee. Her equip is pretty solid, as it has the same effect. But if you don't have one, I would rather roll in Hunter x Hunter for those other units. Kushina Rehime doesn't really bring much to the table. I think most people are just gonna use her as a Valentine Kodo leader, and then just Evo her into her equip, because honestly it's pretty solid, as it gives you some bulk and two full resists. Noctaria could work really well in a dark PvP team, but I'm not a big fan of her active. The base one doesn't have a skill charge or a delay, and the final Evo is a looping spinner, but it doesn't have a time buff. But if you don't need it, Noctaria is honestly a decent enough sub, as she could have up to 9 skill boosts, but honestly I don't see where to use her. I'm not a big fan of her equips either, since they don't have a useful active, but at the very least those damage awakenings and that heal OE could work really well on certain units. Okay, these next upcoming units are slightly less bad, but still bad. Honestly, some of these are here only because you can exchange for them. Astra is not one of them, but she's here because of her own personal damage multiplier. It's over 1 million, and it's honestly overkill. And it takes a lot of orbs to make her work, since you'll be needing to make a BDP and a break, and hit 7c. Outside of her insane damage, she has some pretty good utility, up to 6 skill boosts and cloud and tape resist, but she is bindable and doesn't have a skill bind resist, and her active is not that useful either. Her equips are really good, they both have 2 team HPs, a full resist and full bind resist, so just on awakenings alone, they're really solid. So Astra's pretty decent, just based on her equips alone. 
Next is Ideal, who has three forms and five equips, so at least one of these is bound to be good, right? I don't really think so. They only do a modest amount of damage, only if you take the Levitate Super Awakening. So even though she has a lot of utility Super Awakenings, you'll have to forego them if you want to do some damage. And if you want to use her for utility, her regular Awakenings don't offer that much. So she's in an awkward place where she doesn't exceed at either role. She has a full Kirk Active and a full board change on a 6 turn cooldown plus an RCB boost if you match 5 attributes every turn. So that active has an average cooldown, so it's not that special. Her first equip doesn't offer much either. It does have 2 skill boosts and a heal OE, but has a pretty useless active for an equip. The second equip is a little more useful, as it has a decent mix of utility and bulk, and the active is not the worst, but it could kill you. I remember using this in UN2 with New Year Feral, and when Kenshin couldn't lock my blue orb, Kenshin just hit me twice and killed me. Dark Ideal does pretty much the same thing as Red Ideal, except she gives you a move time buff, so again, not that special or usable. And same goes for the third equip. Light Ideal is slightly different, but I'd say equally as bad as the other forms. She does have a little bit more utility with her double cross that she got instead of a skill charge awakening. And her Cleric Acta pretty much retains the same cooldown as the other forms, and her last equip is not that bad. It has a pretty cool mix of awakenings, but honestly very limited applications. So overall, Ideal has many forms and equips, but none of them really stand out. I didn't really focus on her leader skills, but they're somewhat decent. A lot of people are unhappy because Gongho removed the no skyfall restriction, so a lot of people see this as a nerf. Align is a pretty decent full cleric that can have up to 4 heal TPA+. Plus. Her active is on a decent cooldown that also generates red orb. So not a bad cleric overall, but she's about to be overshadowed really soon by Kami Masubi. So if you have a copy of her, I don't see why you would want to roll or exchange for Alina. Her first equip is not that special. While it has those OEs, Rose, and Corp, there's no effective skill boost or bulk awakenings. This could work for a Shiba team if you put it on your Kami Masubi, but you probably won't need all that healing. And for Rose and damage, you could find other better equips. Her second equip is slightly better, as he has a bunch of utility. But again, that active doesn't fully do it for me. Alina's Archivo is a full cleric as well, but has less heal OEs, and instead has a double L. So she could play a decent role if you're unable to have another unit to handle assist removal recovery. I'm not a big fan of her last equip. It's been so long since auto recovery equips were useful. This is not even good for the old Metatron because she boosts all stats, so those auto recovery awakenings are not gonna do much. Dina is the BGM introduced during the last run. She does a decent amount of damage, but only when making a PDP and taking on the 3 or 5 color super awakening. It'll be pretty difficult to fit that box in, so her damage rating is a bit misleading. At the very least, she's an easy leader, since her leader skill only requires matching 2 attributes, and gives plus combos and follow up damage. Her 1 turn cooldown active is also your canvas, as you can put whatever you want on her. And at the very least, the base active is a quick counter to RCB debuffs and roulettes. She could work as a Valentine Noah leader, but traditionally, she uses someone like Yoko and herself as leaders. Her dumbbell is a pretty good equip, it's 5 effective skill boosts and gives some OEs. The team RCB is not that impactful, but could be pretty handy in dungeons like Old UN5. Her second equip is one of many 3 team HP equips, but this one provides a full blind recess and gives a small damage multiplier. But that active on an equip leaves a lot to be desired. There's only one other 3 team HP equip out there with full blind recess, the Fagans, and this one lacks a damage awakening. Fagan is way more accessible, and you may not really care about that damage awakening. So depending on the team, Dina's equip is probably not that much better. Overall, Dina is pretty decent, but I wouldn't chase her or think of buying her bundle. Akine has 3 forms and 4 equips. All of her forms do a pretty decent amount of damage, but I'm not really a big fan of the base form because of her active. Usually rainbow teams handle pure shields by using the Layton or run better pierce actives like the Rende Trio, Mahima, and Adelie. Her first equip is not that good. It has an okay mix of awakenings, but there's no bulk and that active is not that good. The second one is decent due to its bulk and OEs, but a double L on an equip is not useful at all, unless you put it on a unit that relies on Ls for damage. But who's doing that? I think Akinis green form is the best out of all of them, since this one can handle void attribute and damage absorption shields 50% of the time if you match all attributes every turn. She's probably not gonna get that much time to shine, since the new Adelie recolor plays that role much better and gives you a much needed shield for Adelie teams. Still, green Akina is still pretty solid in my opinion. Her green equip doesn't offer much though. Her blue evil is pretty solid too. It plays the same role as the green one, but she only gives you 2 turns on a 7 turn cooldown, which is still pretty solid, and this form has a slightly higher damage multiplier than the green one. So depending on the dungeon, maybe the blue one is better to bring along. 
Now last equip is pretty solid for non-rainbow based units since it gives you a damage boost and a guard break awakening which are really nice for newer dungeons. So overall Akin is really solid and she's honestly the only unit I would exchange for but only if I had a lot of exchange fodder. Next is the new BGM, Lisette, who I think has a weird mix of awakenings. She doesn't do a crazy amount of damage, but she does bring two team HPs, and she's also missing skill bind resist. This can come into play if you decide to bring more than two copies in a team, since you could create a system with three of them, but I don't see why you would. This is yet another attempt to make green TPAs happen, but it didn't seem to stick in JP. Sure, there's Barton in Toka, but she doesn't really run Lisette, because Toka herself has a pierce active. For a BGM unit, Lisette is kinda underwhelming. She does have pretty decent equips though. The first one gives you 4 effective skill boosts, 2 team HPs, and 2 skill bind resist. You're meant to use her own equip on herself, since she's missing those skill bind resist, and also her leader skill doesn't really have a high effective HP multiplier, at least when compared to modern leader. Her second equip is not that good. 3 team HP awakenings are plentiful, and while those OEs are nice, that active is not that good. So honestly I don't see the point of chasing her or buying her a bundle. I guess her first equip might be worth it to you, but honestly I don't see it. Tulia is a pretty neat overskin unit. It has an insane amount of utility, but it might be hard to include her in certain teams, as her active skill is not one of those must-haves like clerics and piercers. That 1.5 HP boost could come in pretty handy when handling big hits, and the neat thing about it is that you can stack it up with shields. Also RCB debuffs and board shrinks are more commonplace nowadays, so those effects are really good as well. But if that's your only criteria, then Pixel Jill and the upcoming Blue Bald in Evo cover these mechanics on short cooldowns. Tulia also covers a lot of utility with her double cross and double L. Her full blind and cloud resists are awesome too. I do wish one of these were taped though, but I'm just being nitpicky at this point. She's very solid overall. Her equip is decent as well, it's 4 effective skill boosts, tape resists and offers some bulk. I do wish to get a copy of her, even though I don't have any immediate uses for her. And even though I'm a fan of her, this still won't drive me to rolling valentines. Instead, I'm willing to try my luck in that valentine super gathfest I mentioned before. Like almost all super gathfests, this one will be 10 magic stones per poll, so it's double the cost of rolling in valentines, she'll be at 2% in that machine. So it's pretty much the same thing rate wise, and the super gathfests will have way more goodies than valentines. A prime example will be the new Goten and Nova, who will both be at 3% each. I won't hold my breath. Even then her pull rate is very low and I won't be rolling that much. If you like her as much as I do, you could just buy her bundle and skip the RAM. And if you really really like her and want two copies of her, you'll be able to buy her bundle again during the Super Gathfest. And the same thing goes for Lisette, but I don't really care about her. Maris is one of the new 7 stars introduced during this run, and she's a pretty decently optimized full cleric. All of her awakenings are pretty useful, except maybe her heart L. That awakening rarely is useful, so maybe it would have been better if she traded that off for more heal OEs. Only having at most 3 might not be enough for some teams in super altitude dungeons. She also comes with a 7x6 leader skill, so that's another plus for her. Mary's first equip is a good 4 turn delay, especially for high RCB units with heal OEs of their own like Kami Masubi or Sophie Sam. Her second equip isn't as good, I've come to expect more effective skill boosts from two skill boost equips, or at the very least some more bulk so this doesn't really stand out that much, especially so when compared to all of Nay's equips. And finally, the new queen of swiping. Valentine Noah is yet another strong 3 unit system that is capable of swapping almost all content in an A. I was going to say all content, but without Scarlet Witch, all UN5 will be out of Valentine Noah's reach. Unlike the previous 3 unit break systems like Aki and Misaka, with 75 stones you are sure to get at least one copy of Noah. Let's take the worst case scenario and say you roll 15 times without seeing B Noah. You can exchange those 15 units for one copy and repeat until ideally you have 3 copies of her. You could only get 2 and pair with a friend, but I feel like with Binoa you have to go all out to get 3, because for some teams you rather run 3 as subs and use other leaders. This seems to be the case for a lot of XP farming teams out there. As of right now, every new collab and in-house RAM seems to have at least one of these type of exchanges, so I feel like it's apt to put a magic stone price on future exchanges and see how this one compares to others. If I were to exchange for Noah, I would go for 3 copies to have team building flexibility. So this comes to a grand total of 225 stones. Hunter Hunter is a 7 stone RAM with a 15 to 1 unit exchange for this unit. I don't think the unit itself is used a lot. A lot of people rather use their equip on dark units like the future GFE Koten. Next, bartenders has 2 7 for 1 exchanges 
Ideal, and Toka. Honestly, I don't think I've seen Ideal being used. And with one single copy of Pitoka, other bartending units, and Daki from Demon Slayer, it's possible to build a team capable of tackling the upcoming UN6 dungeon. Additionally, for some dungeons, you could run a full Toka system. My Hero Academia is a 6 magic stone collab. This collab has a 15 for 1 exchange for Deku and All Might, which as a unit looks decent, but it kinda has a pretty low damage multiplier. At the very least, this is a 3 skill boost equip, and the 99 turn damage cap break could be useful. I'm still skeptical on damage cap break equips, but the 99 turn effect looks way more attractive than other equips currently in the game. And the latest exchange of this type is for the new Illusionary Ares BGM, Lyle, and you'll actually need 20 units to trade for a copy of him. Incorrectly assuming you don't have any pantheons, rolling 20 times in the rem will get you enough fodder for one Lyle. He's also a 3 unit system, so you'll need at least 2 copies of him. Unlike with Valentine Noah, I don't feel like you need 3 copies of Lyle, since it seems right now that teams in JP run 2 Lyles as leaders, so you could just pair with a friend. This is a long aside, but I just felt like it was important to discuss which other units you are guaranteed to get by rolling and exchanging. 225 stones for a Binoa system is pretty pricey, at least when compared to the other exchanges except for Lyle. Rolling for Hunter Hunter and Bartenders has more upside than rolling in Valentines, since with the latter, you'll be pretty much only rolling for fodder, with a low chance of rolling other units, which are also not even that good in dupes. At least Hunter Hunter and Bartenders have way more support for other teams. The My Hero Ram looks pretty bad, but there seems to be at least a couple of okay units in there. The Illusionary RS Ram unfortunately could give you a lot of pantheons, but you might already have a lot of copies ready to be exchanged, so the 100 magic stone price per exchange is maybe an inflated price and you might not need to roll that much to get two copies of Lyle. All that aside, and that was a lot sorry, let me get back to Valentine Noah. Like with Aki and Misaka, her system can ignore damage void shields and gives you a swipeable board, but what makes her more special than them is her one turn haste every other turn that allows her to loop other units or units with equips that you couldn't loop otherwise. A common example in JP is looping Pito's equip by putting it on a low cooldown unit like Tanjiro, Kenshin, and Scarlet Witch. And he doesn't have access to Scarlet Witch and probably will never get access to Scarlet Witch so we'll miss out on looping her damage spike and damage cap break, which unfortunately seems to be crucial for swiping all UN5 would be Noah. That is only one dungeon out of many that she can swipe in an A, so Valentine Noah is still pretty solid for farming everything else in the game. The price tag is still pretty high for me, but maybe it's not for you, and maybe you could get really lucky and get a copy or two of her while collecting trade fodder. I wouldn't really count on it, because she's at 1% and the chances of not seeing one of them in 45 rolls is pretty high. If you decide to get the Nova system, I wish you good luck in your rolls. Personally, I'll be saving for future events. I'll be rolling in Hunter x Hunter and might try to get a live system in the future. And also, even though it might not come to an A, we don't have any details on the slime collab, so I would hold off on rolling Valentines until maybe the last day and see if we know anything about that collab. Maybe something from there catches your eye. Alright, that does it for this video. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.